Hi guys and welcome back to the IELTS course. In our today's lesson we are going to learn about IELTS reading module. We are going to learn about different strategies and tips and how to complete successfully this part of the test. Before we'll start learning about IELTS reading strategies and tips, I would like to give you a brief overview about the IELTS reading section. In the IELTS exam, you'll have three long passages to read and 40 total questions to answer. You'll be given 60 minutes in total for this part of the test. There are two different types of IELTS, and the first one is the academic IELTS. If you are taking this part, this type of IELTS, academic IELTS, you will have different passages compared to the second part of the IELTS, which is a general training. Your passages are going to be about academic topics from general interest topics written by general audience. So for example, resources will be from journals, magazines, books, and newspapers. And if you are taking general training IELTS, your topics are going to be from basic social English training topics and also general interest notices, flyers, timetables, documents, newspaper articles, instructions, and manuals. So these are type of resources you are going to have if you are taking general training passage. So remember, we have three passages, 40 questions in 60 minutes to complete this part of the test. Before we start reading about IELTS strategies, we are going to review question types you are going to have on the reading module. There are many types of questions used in the reading module and you should be familiar with these types. For example, you'll have multiple choice questions, short answer questions, completing sentences, completing notes, summary, table, flowcharts, and the following list you see on the slide. You need to know how to approach all of them and know how to complete these tasks. However, you are not going to have all of them on your reading test. And now we are going to learn our first strategy, matching. In the IELTS exam, you'll be asked to match each definition or date in list A with a related term in list B. The main strategy here to remember is scan the reading passage, looking for the words, date, or phrases in list A. You need to read this sentence where this word or date is found and ask yourself the following question. Is a related term or phrase in the list B? If not, you need to read the sentence that comes before or after that. Remember, the word in list A may be in italics or may be capitalized. The matching word or phrase may be a paraphrase. So you have to make sure to understand the context and don't just match identical words. Remember, sometimes you may use a word from list B more than once. All right, guys, so now we have an example for our matching activity, our matching task. And here you need to read the paragraph, match each item in list A with an item in list B. So as you see, you're given two lists, list A, place name, and then three options, by Castor and Avon. So these are three names you have. And now you have also a list B with different meanings. So we have A, B, C, D, E. So you need to find out. So this name, place name by refers to which one, to A, B, or C. Some of them can be repeated too, so that's totally normal. So your, your task in this case um, to do is to go back to your passage, highlight the words beginning with by. Whatever you find the word by, so highlight it. And then if you see the word caster, highlight it as well. And then if you see Avon, highlight it as well. And then go back and start reading these sentences. So if you read a um, sentence that contains the word by, so let's see. It says, for example, the place named Derby comes from two old Viking words, deer and by small rural settlement. So by small rural settlement, do you see? So now go back to your list B and you see A, B, C, D, E, and we have D, which is a village. And small rural settlement, it's our village. So as, as I mentioned earlier, that sometimes you might not find exact same words um, for example, in the passage, and it can be a paraphrase. So in this case, small rural settlement would be a village, and then we found our word caster. So if you start reading that sentence, Chester, another common place name, ending is a Saxon origin, um, and is also seen in the forms of 
sister and caster and it doesn't really have any any response so i couldn't find it i can i'm continuing reading it refers to a place where roman soldiers establish their forts so forts and you see we have fort and that means our number two is going to be a fort and the last one is about Avon. So I found the word Avon. I highlighted that word and now I'm going to read it. The Avon River gets its name from the Celtic word that means just that river. So this one was easy. So that means Avon. It's river. So that's the name of the river. So and that's how we do our matching activity. And I know this is just one paragraph, but the strategy is pretty much the same. So sometimes it can be two paragraphs and you are going to highlight the words and go back and read only these sentences. So you do not need to read the whole entire passage. You only need to read specific sentences in order to find your matching, your matching phrases. So that's what we have for the matching activity, guys. And now we are going to begin reviewing our next strategy by short answer. In the IELTS test, you'll be asked answer the questions below. You'll be asked write no more than three words for each answer and write your answers in boxes one and three on your answer sheet. First of all, you have to scan the passage looking for keywords found in the question. And you need to read how the question begins. For example, sometimes when the question begins with the words who, what, when, where, and how long, it can help you to determine what, what kind of information you need to look for in the passage. The most important things to remember do not write more than suggested number of words. If the directions say no more than three words, write only three words or less. Do not write four words. If you write four words, in this case, you'll be penalized, so keep that in mind and make sure you read carefully how many words you are allowed to write. And now let's take a look at our example about short answer questions. So in this case, IELTS exam is asking you to read the paragraphs and answer the questions. Also in the IELTS test, you are asked to write no more than three words for each answer. So make sure you read your question first before starting to read your paragraph or passage. So, for example, if you take a look at question number one, you have a question beginning with how long is a marathon race now? How long? It represents a number. So, we'll be looking for a specific number. Number two, what two places did Philippides run between? What two places is a specific name for places. And the last question we have, where were the Olympics held in 1908? And in this case, where is going to be a place? So similar to number two. So when you have this type of question, you do not need to read the entire passage. All you have to do, read your questions first, then identify what kind of information you need to find, then go back to your passage and find specific information that represent number, place, or maybe location of specific information. But also make sure you pay attention to the words now, and for example, in the question three, 1908, 